These are the plaintiffs, Diane and Harris Birkin. Diane says they purchased a couple of brand new couches from the defendant's store. And after less than a year, the things looked like old, ratty, 20-year-old pieces of junk. They didn't damage them and are here suing for the return of the $5,301.01 they're owed. This is the defendant, Greg Moser. He says he sold them two perfectly good couches, which they abused and damaged by letting their pets sleep on them. And he owes nothing. Even the manufacturer of the couches agrees. He's accused of selling cheap stuff. All parties, please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Leon is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Birkin, um, you folks purchased some couches from the defendant's uh, company. You're the owner, correct, Mr. Moser? Yes. All right, so tell me what happened. In May of 2020, you, you purchased the couches. You had been to that store before and made other purchases. Yes, we did. This was our third or fourth purchase there. They were delivered in June and Immediately, well, not immediately, probably about two months after they were delivered, you could tell that the fabric was was not holding up. The, the seams at the top of the cushions were coming down. If you sat near a seam in the cushion, you would fall into the seam. Okay, you, ex you ended up accepting the couches. You didn't say, hey, I these did. don't feel I like, did. you didn't say, I, I don't want these. These aren't like the ones we sat in in the showroom. So you end up accepting them. They look fine and they are fine to you when they deliver them. You're, you're, you're upset because right. according to you, within four months, what? Where there's, I, I think you have the pictures where the, the piping meets the side of the arm. It's fraying, it's coming apart from the, from the sewing. Um, all of the cushions piping on the top, they're all sagging. Yeah, that's one side. Yep, and that's peeling. The The fabric itself is like peeling. That's piping that has broken through the fabric on one of the pillows. More peeling. Your Honor, if I may. There, that's the one. It's just, mm -hmm. just coming out of the seam. Yeah, but it doesn't come out on its own. Something has to have, I, I don't get how that, if it didn't look that way when you got it, something caused it to look this way after you got it. And I don't know, do you have a pet? I do. I have three dogs. They're not allowed three on the furniture. They've never been allowed on the furniture. Mm -hmm. There are too many poodles and a, a German Shepherd. Uh, what were you going to say? I think you were trying to say something, Mr. Birkin. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, I'm in the garment manufacturing business. When you have fabric that isn't substantial enough to hold a seam, if it frays within that seam allowance, it could end up fraying beyond the seam. And it is my belief that that fabric is just weak and has over a short amount of time from normal use, stress on that seam has caused it to fray. Those aren't snags. Those aren't pulls from anything. It's simply not constructed well. Mr. Moser, let me ask you a question. Have you received any complaints uh, uh, from anybody else who may have purchased this couch? Well, di first of all, has anyone else purchased this couch from this manufacturer from your store? Yeah, well, well, this manufacturer we sell a lot of sofas from. They offer hundreds of different fabrics, so I'm not sure if someone bought that exact fabric, but we did check with the manufacturer to make sure there was no recalls on that fabric. And? There was none. And what did you find when you went to take a look at it? Well, we went to, we went to take pictures and take a look at the problem. Um, our guys did take the photos. They did notice uh, they, did have a, they did have pets. Um, but, you know, we took the photos. We sent them directly. You know, we don't make any decisions. We send everything right to the manufacturer. Uh, the manufacturer got back to us and said, without us telling them, said it looks like there's some pet damage on the lower arms. See the side of that, the piping? Like, why is that getting all twisty like that? Well, I just think that's just from sitting. These seats are gel. They're, they're a gel foam seat. It's a synthetic down. 
It's a very soft feel. Down has to be maintained. Uh, it's a great feel when you sit on it. But How do you maintain you get down? Up from it, and you have to fluff and puff. But other than that, that's 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 all you got to do. Just fluff and puff on a constant basis. Well, that and if you're not sitting in the middle of a cushion, if you're sitting on the seam of a cushion, you're going to crush the two edges of the cushion. Cushions are made to be sat in the middle of the seat. Let me see your sales agreement. Was there an invoice in writing? Yes, correct? Yes. Is this it? That would be it. All right. Merchandise is warranted by the manufacturer. Inspect merchandise being delivered. Claims for damage must be made at this time. So your store provides no warranty. It's the manufacturer who warrants, according to this, this signed form. Correct. We've been in business for 42 years in the community, though. If, if there is a flaw, if there is something that the manufacturer says, we, we you know, technically we won't carry, we're, we're going to do everything we can to try and make the customer happy, certainly. Oh, she, doesn't, she doesn't feel like you did everything you can. Go ahead, Ms. Birkin, because I, I saw the emails back and forth. Go ahead. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, I have two couches that look like they're 20 years old that I bought in June. I first started reporting the damage to you or the, the faulty workmanship to you in October. They looked terrible in October. I don't care if my German Shepherd laid on here every day. It'd be hairy. It wouldn't look like this. This is terrible. I don't know how, whether your pets go on your sofas or don't go on your sofas. I don't know how you run your household. My dog goes wherever she pleases. Uh, I started off really, you know, really disciplined. And after 11 years and she's a cancer survivor, she can go where she can go right here, right next to me right now <laughs> while I'm talking to you if she wants. I actually but have gates up. Here's the thing. I have gates up. They can't come in here. Yeah, it, that, that's fine. But here's the thing. I, I don't know that I even have to figure out how the damage that you're showing me happened. What I have to figure out is a contracts issue. And that, although I may not know what goes on in your house, I do know contracts. So let's talk about it. You can't have a right bigger than what you contracted for. When I look at this document, and indeed um, it says here that the merchandise is warranted by the manufacturer. You have no warranty by the people you are suing, zero warranty from them. So if you accept the furniture on that day and your complaint is this didn't wear well, that is a complaint to take up with the manufacturer, not with the store that sold it to you, because that's what you agreed to. This is what you put your signature on. Not me. You guys signed that and said, yeah, this is how we're taking it. We're taking it warranted by the manufacturer. So in this case, you're suing for the cost of the couches, $2,800. you are suing for two days of missed work and another two grand in inconvenience. And you're not going to be getting any of that from Mr. Moser and his store consumers furniture gallery. I'm ruling in his favor because that's exactly what the contract mandates that I do since he has provided zero warranty to you. And I don't even have to decide whether your three dogs have anything to do with how it looks. Their only job is to deliver them in a way that you accept them on the day that they deliver them. And that's exactly what happened. My verdict in this case is for the defendant. So perhaps everybody learned a lesson in this case. Certainly the plaintiffs have, maybe even the defendant. Mr. and Ms. Birkin, how do you feel about what the judge just decided? It's in black and white in your contract. It is. I, I just think a storefront should stand behind what they sell. And There's I, an I think, I think I think they should have dealt with the manufacturer, and, and they didn't. They, they didn't stand up for us at all. There's an expectation that furniture is going to last more than three months. Mm -hmm. Well, I think everybody would agree with that. But anyway, uh, you signed the contract and your your beef really then is directly with the manufacturer, not the store. Let me ask you, Mr. Moser, you're the you're with the store. Did you realize that that's the, the way that this would work out? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the manufacturer does warranty the product. Um, so ultimately, they have to make the decision after seeing the, the damage or abuse on how to handle it, if, if they are going to cover the, cover up through the warranty or not. Okay, well, that's the way it is. Thank you very much, Mr. Moser. And that'll wrap it up for this case. Very interesting case, no question about it. Let's see what the judges have to say now. You didn't have to make 
a determination about exactly how this damage happened at the do end you, of the day. Do you have, you saw the pictures. I have a theory. What's I your theory? theory. I, I think you can, uh, you can hang it on a, a certain domesticated carnivore <laughs> known as Canis familiaris, otherwise known as a dog, because yeah. there's one in a cage right next to it in one of the photos that they submitted. It's well, they a have German dogs, shepherd. But right? I mean, go ahead. Right. Look, I had a German shepherd for 16 years, and she would get up on the sofa. She never did it when we were home because she knew she wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> but sometimes we'd leave the house and then kind of tiptoe around to the other door to try to catch her, and she'd be right on it. She would jump off kind of sulk around, cry a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> she yeah, got no, caught, that shame. She knew she was in big trouble. You didn't have to say a word. She just knew. <laughs> so they're smart and they're clever. <laughs> so Linda wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, uh, there are now cameras everywhere, and that is true. Uh, at what point do they become an invasion of privacy? They really don't. I mean, it's interesting you say that, but when you think about ring doorbells, absolutely legal. When you think about cameras on streetlights, absolutely legal. They're on cars now. It is just a different way of living than we lived before. There's a lot of good that comes from people having cameras, and there is some bad.